This brief introductory video is a compilation of clips from interviews uh, with Kevin on his gravity theory. Physics today still does not know what causes gravity. It is the only one of the four fundamental forces of nature that we do not have a mechanism for or understand how it works. To be honest with you, when you first called me up and uh, said that you wanted to um, have me sign a little piece of paper that said that you had this theory that you wanted to be protected from the rest of society and things, um, and then you told me it was a theory on gravity, um, I didn't really know what to think. And uh, mm. <laughs> here's a friend of mine who lives in Fremont, Minnesota, who uh, is an engineer who all of a sudden comes up with a theory of gravity. And um, could you give me a little background of just how a, phys you know, a person that's a non-physicist can come up with a gravity theory? Well, in around 2003, I started studying advanced mathematics and physics, thermodynamics, uh, again. And I hadn't, except for what I use in my career, I hadn't done that for many years just for the sake of studying. Mm -hmm. And I really stumbled across uh, the concept that molecules should collapse. So when you have the concept that they should collapse, but they really don't, uh, what went through your brain to, to get to the point where you realize, hey, uh, this is potential cause of gravity? Well, there are several places where this is in literature or diagram. And I was looking at one of these diagrams that literally took, af after I read it, of course, about three seconds to formulate the theory. Now, I didn't have the calculations worked out until about 90 days later. Okay. And at the time you signed the notarized diagram, I had no calculations. Right. Um, and that, that's one of the nice things about it is the calculations didn't have to work out and things have actually fallen in place along the way. Kevin first came up with the idea of gamma ray energy exchange accounting for gravity when he was studying why atoms don't collapse. Can you explain why um, atoms don't collapse according to your theory? Well, according to classical electrodynamic theory, atoms being charged particles accelerating in atomic orbitals should give off radiation, lose energy, lose mass, and atoms should collapse. And I'm saying the reason they don't is gravity. The energy is exchanged and um, electrons on average keep the same mass. A graviton is an electromagnetic wave also known as a photon. A gravity photon, or a graviton, is simply a photon with a wavelength that is approximately one and a half times the diameter of an electron. Well, it's a background radiation field of gamma rays, a very, very short wavelength. Its frequency is quite high in the gamma ray range, mm -hmm. and these are so small that uh, I would estimate that most of them just go right through us and through the objects in this room. Mm -hmm. And the gravitons that are absorbed by the electrons in our, our bodies keep us tethered to the Earth. A good analogy to help understand in a simple way how his theory works is imagine you're swinging a ball on a rope. Now if that ball gets heavier every time you swing it out in front of you, you're going to get pulled forward. Now the reason that explains his theory is that say there's a, a large amount of gravitons coming from a certain area, such as a massive body like the Sun, when that electron starts traveling towards the Sun, it'll have a chance to have a head-on collision with one of these gravitons. Now when that happens, there's an energy exchange where some of the energy is converted to mass. And so what happens is when that electron rounds its apex towards the sun, it's slightly heavier. And when it finishes rounding that apex, it re-emits the photon, graviton, and releases the energy. So it is less massive as it rounds the other side of its orbital. Now if you can imagine that happening many, many times, every time it gets to the side that's facing the sun, it gets heavier, it's going to be pulled that direction. One of the things that I think makes your theory so strong is you've got so many already observable evidences and it can actually be tested. So um, why don't we go through some of those evidences um, and just have an explanation on some of those. Well, isolated neutrons and uh, nuclei that have no electrons in orbitals are not pulled by gravity at all because it takes electrons in atomic orbitals to absorb gravitons. This phenomenon can be seen in the solar wind. Um, there are many stripped neutrons, which are a, a neutron without an electron orbiting around it, streaming off of the sun. Now these particles not only 
do not get pulled back into the sun by gravity, they also stream right past the Earth and past the moon without being bent by our gravitational field. Stripped neutrons were traveling outward at a constant velocity because they weren't being pulled back by the sun's gravity. But what happened was they went through the tail of a comet. And when they went through this tail of the comet, they picked up electrons. And after they passed through this tail, they started slowing down, which was unable to be explained until Kevin's theory. Um, Kevin's theory easily explains it in that before they had the electrons, there was no chance for gravitons to interact with these electrons. But after they picked up the electrons into orbitals, which were spinning fast enough to actually make the energy exchange, they were affected by gravity. Now it's important to note that free electrons, which are not in orbit, do not have sufficient energy to make this exchange with gravitons, and thus are also not affected by gravity. Another good piece of evidence is that massive bodies within our solar system can be observed emitting large amounts of gamma ray radiation right in the range where Kevin predicts that his graviton will be around 312 negative electron volts, I believe. Now this is important because physics doesn't know why they're glowing bright in gamma ray radiation. And it makes perfect sense with Kevin's theory because these would be the gravitons actually streaming off of these massive bodies. Egret's range for those higher energy gamma rays was greater than 100 mega electron volts. So 312 mega electron volts is sitting right in that range nicely. Mm -hmm. And indeed the moon is glowing very bright in gamma rays in that range. The expansion is accelerating, I guess this is a simple way to put it. Mm -hmm. And uh, physicists try to explain that by the existence of dark energy. But if some gravitons escape into deep space without encountering any mass, which they will, then the center of the galaxy and the center of each galaxy will be losing gravitational energy. So according to your theory, there's no need for this dark energy added? Correct. You are the world's first person to ever calculate a value of gravity. It's always been just an experiment to measure it. And uh, so is that kind of uh, a little bizarre to you to think oh, you're yeah. the first person in the world to do something? There's a lot of adjectives you could <laughs> describe it with. But yes, uh, it, it is a little bizarre. His theory is incredibly elegant and simple. It can be boiled down to G, which is the gravitational constant, equals four-thirds HF, H being Planck's constant and F being the frequency of the graviton. Was it pretty thrilling for you to uh, come down to this condensed little thing? Oh yes, the, the condensation uh, happened you know, much later, but to do the photon energy calculation and come out on the order of the gravitational constant, that was a very exciting moment. And I knew I didn't have the, the main equation finished, uh, but I knew I was on the right track at that point. And that was very exciting. If Kevin's theory is correct, it's very exciting news because it's easily one of the biggest discoveries in physics in the last hundred or so years. And it is also the grand unification theory due to the fact that it explains how gravity works, finally. For more information on Fructi's gravity theory, including his abstract and short paper, the calculated value of G, the full paper, and his blog, check out fructitheory.com.